Welcome to Factorio Masterclass. My name is Nilos, and this is the series where you become a better engineer. Today, we're going to explain one of the most ubiquitous concepts of Factorio, the main bus. The objective of this video is to show you how you can structure the base using the concept of the main bus. There is a reason why this concept is so common. It is incredibly simple and yet very powerful in that it manages many parts of your base very easily and gives you a good overview visually of how things are performing. It has a common way of managing inputs, a common way of extracting outputs, and also at the same time, a very clear visual indicator of whether things are performing as they should in your base. Whether you're a new player or a seasoned veteran, this concept is an important tool in your engineering toolbox. Therefore, it's worth going into more depth just to make sure that everyone's on the same page and have a clear understanding and idea about how to use it most efficiently. At the end of this video, you will have a clear idea about what the main boss is, how to build it and manage it, as well as some of the strengths and weaknesses that to look out for when applying this concept to your own base. And let's dive right in. Factorio Masterclass is my series of tutorials and guides here on YouTube covering all aspects of the game and aims to provide insights and resources to help you become a better engineer. Each episode starts as a workshop session streamed live on my Twitch channel. This is over at twitch.tv slash Nilaus and you're very welcome to drop by. These streams are usually on Mondays at 8 p.m. Central European time. Feel free to drop by and help decide, design and discuss upcoming guides. Our collaborative designs are always superior to what I could have built myself. As always, if you like the video and want to see more, hit the like button and subscribe to the channel for more content like this. If you have ideas, comments or feedback, you're welcome to leave a comment below or join our Discord server with more than 5,000 members discussing the games we play on the channel. This video is structured as a series of answers to common questions that I've heard in relation to how to use a main bus efficiently and effectively. I have on top of that added my own hints, tips and strategies. This video will cover the following topics. Components of a bus, how to get it started, what size should I build, what should go on the bus, strategies for branching off the bus, advantages and disadvantages of using the main bus, and conclusions. Let's start at the beginning. What is a bus and why is it even called a bus? Within the computing field, a bus is a communication system that transfers data between components inside of a computer or between computers. This term has moved outside of the computing field and it has become an analogy which makes a lot of sense for our Factorio architecture. The characteristics for Factorio bus are the parallel lines of materials with forks and branches to serve specific production needs of the base. Generally speaking, raw materials are fed from one end and being consumed along the length of the bus. At each branch of the bus, new materials will be consumed and more complex materials will be added back to the bus again to be used further down the production line. Let's take a closer look at the components of a Factorio main bus. It consists generally of three different parts. It consists of the smelting arrays. This could technically be argued that it's not part of the main bus, but something that comes before. It consists of the actual bus and it consists of the branches off the bus and back onto the bus. The smelting columns are a topic for another day, so we're going to skip that one. The main bus consists of parallel lines, generally four lanes plus two empty lanes, and then the repeating pattern. However, other options do exist. The reason for this is the yellow belts, more specifically the yellow undergrounds. They can only span four tiles and therefore bringing materials from one side of the bus to the other side of the bus for a branch is going to require a lot of undergrounds. And these undergrounds can then only span four tiles and therefore it's advantageous to leave some space between the tiles for branching and for jumping with undergrounds. When talking about branches off the bus, there are basically two schools of thoughts. Either you go on one side only, or you have on both sides. There are strength, there are advantages and disadvantages of both. The advantage of the one-sided bus is that you can always add more lines to the bus because you don't have to pre-allocate how many lines you want on the bus. That means it can just keep growing as big as you need. However, the disadvantage is that you're going to have a bus that's twice as long because you can't use both sides of the bus. Therefore, my recommendation is that you pre-allocate a set amount of space and then branch out to both sides. So you want to build a main bus in your base, but you are maybe a bit in doubt about how to get started with this. First things first, you need to allocate room for the bus. It takes a lot more space than you might think, so plan ahead. Specifically, watch out for water and oil. Water is expensive and cumbersome to get rid of because of the vast amount of landfill needed to fill up a lake if your bus is heading straight for a lake. 
Oil is even worse because it never goes away. Once you tap an oil depot, it's always going to be there. That means when you plan ahead and plan your bus, make sure that it doesn't intersect with an oil depot further down the line. You need to plan for the smelting columns while planning for the bus in order to make sure that you have sufficient room to route things from the initial ore patches to the smelting and into the bus. Building it like this may seem like your bus is starting quite far away from your initial spawning position and your initial ore patches. However, what seems far away in the early game is really just part of your base in the mid to late game. So the balance is whether you need to make some hacks in the early game to fit in the smelting columns to make things more compact, or you build it correctly and then claim some more ground. My preference is of course always to build it right the first time. So claim some ground, build it correctly, make sure that it's scalable, so you don't have to redo it and suffer for it the rest of the game. The only exception to this is of course if you're playing on a death world where expansion is a lot more cumbersome. But that's a different topic. As you're planning the main bus, you also have to keep an eye towards the mid to late game when your initial ore patches have run out and you need to bring things in by train. Here the advantage is that since your initial patches will run out, you will gain some space behind the smelting columns and that is a great place to start bringing in trains with raw materials. So don't use this space for anything else. Make sure that it is available so that you can build a train station here in the mid to late game. Let's look at the sizing of the bus. How big should you make it? That's really very much of individual choice. It also depends on what you want to achieve with the base. I'll give you some recommendations on a minimum size that I would recommend and also a maximum size and maybe sort of a recommended somewhere in the middle. In all these cases, I'm assuming that you build on both sides of the bus. That is my preference. So that's the one I'm gonna recommend. The absolute minimum that I would recommend for building a main bus would be four iron, four copper, two green, two plastic, one steel, and one red. These are not the only items on the bus, but these are the core items that will be scaled up as you want to build a bigger base. I'm also going to provide a maximum recommended size of the bus. Even though the bus is infinitely scalable in width, there is a practical maximum that doesn't really make sense to exceed. As the bus grows and more lines are added to the bus, thereby increasing the width, it becomes more difficult to branch into new production lines. You will simply need too many undergrounds to cross all the other lanes of the bus, and that will be decreasing your efficiency generally. My recommendation for the maximum would be 16 iron, 16 copper, 6 green, 4 plastic, 2 steel, and two red lanes. If you make this size, I recommend splitting the iron and copper so that you have eight lanes of iron on one side and eight lanes of iron on the other side of the bus. This will decrease the amount of undergrounds needed to branch iron and copper, the most common materials, into production lines. Also note that a large part of the iron and copper will go into making the green circuits and red circuits. My recommendation for a main bus size to get you going, launch a couple of rockets and then expand into a mega base is eight lanes of iron, eight lanes of copper, two lanes of green, but make room for four lanes, two lanes of plastic, one lane of steel, one lane of reds, but make room for two lanes of reds. If you build this size, you will be able to launch rockets, complete the science, and start building the materials you need for a larger base. Designing the bus is something you actually have to do up front, so consider what you want to achieve if you want to complete the game, launch some rockets, and then potentially go into a mega base of a completely different structure then this is a good size. However, if you want this base to be the final base of the game without transitioning to a different structure, then I would recommend building it more towards the maximum recommended size. Now that we have the bus built, we have to decide what to put on the bus, aside from the basic materials already mentioned. The short answer is you put anything on the bus that is needed at more than one location for a branch off the bus. That is of course a simplification because there are things that you don't want to bring even though they're used at multiple locations such as copper wires because copper wires is a lower compression item than the copper consists of. Same with iron sticks as well. Generally higher compressed items are better than lower compression items. Another simple rule is don't bring raw ore on the bus. Raw ore goes into the smelting columns at the start of the bus and goes into the bus as finished products. The exception is of course stone because stone is used both for making rails in our hub and also for making rails for purple science. Let me provide some examples of specific items that are kind of borderline on whether to put on the bus and let me argue why I think they should or should not be there. The first one is most contested because I see this being mentioned every time I build a bus and I get raging remarks in the comment section. So I expect raging remarks in the comment section as well this time. The item is gears. Why not put gears on the bus? Because gears are higher compression than the iron. You take two iron becoming one gear. So why not put it on the bus? The decision for me not to include gears on the bus is because of the balancing of flexibility versus compression. 
The argument for gears is that it's higher compression item and therefore you will need fewer belts to transport it. My argument is that anything that requires gears also requires iron plates. Therefore, if you have it as separate lines, you will need to do more branches to service production lines such as green science or red science or the hub or engines. That means you are spending more materials, making more lines, making a more congested bus, rather than maintaining the flexibility by having everything as iron and then producing the small amounts of gears that is needed for, let's say, red and green science on site at the production line. Engines, what about those? Since they're used for both blue science and for electric engines, wouldn't that argue that they should go on the bus? My answer to that is no. It is correct that engines are used for blue science, but you make it on site near the blue science because that's where you need it. The engines you need for electric engines can be produced on site where you produce the electric engines because the only electric engines you need are for the robotic frames and those are only needed for the yellow science. So build them at that point. What about science? Science is being crafted at multiple different locations on the bus and needs to be brought to a common location. Isn't that exactly what the bus is for? My answer is it depends. You can bring it back on the bus, but remember then you need to have seven lines or at least seven half lines allocated in advance on the bus. The alternative to bringing science back on the bus is to bring it behind the other production lines off that side of the bus. This is of course only feasible if you have, as I would recommend, built science only on one side of the bus. What about low density structures? My answer is yes, they are needed for both the yellow science and for rockets and they are highly compressed, so they are a perfect candidate to go on the bus. I just wanted something that was an affirmative. Now that we know how to build the bus, how to get it started and what to put on the bus, it's time to get a bit more technical about the details of how to branch on and off the bus. This part will demonstrate some common methods of merging and splitting off the bus. There are generally three types of ways to branch off the bus. I've named them dedicated lanes, prioritized lanes, and shared lanes. I'll explain them separately and how and when to use them correctly. A dedicated lane is when you remove a full lane from the bus or several lanes. Thereby, you guarantee that a certain amount, a certain share of the overall production will be always dedicated completely to this location. This method should only be used for what I would call always on basic products, such as green circuits, red circuits, and blue circuits. These items are used in so vast quantities that no matter how many you produce, you always want more of it. Additionally, they require so many inbound materials that you want to make sure that you have scaled up your inbound sufficiently to keep the red, green and blue circuits rolling. Shared lanes should be the default way and splits a lane evenly between the branch and the bus. This method plays into the advantage of the main bus by allowing all parts of the bus to get at least some materials, thereby the, allowing the entire base to continue operating at a reduced capacity in case of shortages. The last method of splitting is the prioritized lane, and this should in my opinion be reserved as a temporary measure to prioritize a specific item or production line for a certain time such as the hub or modules in case we want to prioritize those parts for whatever we're building in the base. The reason I dislike this as a default strategy and want to warn against using this too much in your base is because a temporary demand spike will starve the science production. And my preference is I'd rather have everything running something somewhat instead of some things running 100% and other things not running at all. An example of such a demand spike is when you, for example, upgrade a large amount of belts from red to blue belts. At that point, the hub will start consuming a lot of iron in order to refill the stockpile of blue belts. If you use prioritized splitting in that case, then the rest of the bus will simply be starved and all the signs will stop because no signs is proceeding further down the bus. I don't find that to be a good solution. Generally, I would strive to branch full lanes off the bus with one of the mentioned strategies. But it is also possible to make mixed belt branches. The reason I want to make full lane branches off the bus whenever possible is because of the mess that it creates in the bus if you start mixing lanes. There isn't a lot of room on the bus and making splitters and undergrounds like this is, in my opinion, a mess. But it can be a necessary mess or you might not even care about it. So that is up to you. Another interesting topic of the splitting off the bus is the rebalancing back on the bus after the split. Now, when you do a split, you will commonly take half of the lane and export it in and then half the lane will continue. If we have four lanes, you will now have three and a half lanes of throughput, but they will be split on three full lanes and one half lane. Making a four by four balancer spreads the load evenly among the four lanes in a group. But it also hides the two capacity utilization on the bus by making the belts look full after a rebalance. This is, however, my preferred way of doing it and therefore also my recommendation because it enables you to be able to draw from any lane of the group 
knowing that you are drawing from the group as a whole, as long as you remember to rebalance it afterwards. If a product is starved on the bus, it will still be visible as the belts will only be partially filled after a split and a rebalance. In that case, the answer is the same, add more inbound materials or upgrade the belt to increase the throughput of the bus. Before we dive into the conclusions and go through the advantages and disadvantages of the main bus, I'd like to take a moment to thank all of the Patreon supporters who make it possible for me to make these videos like this. If you want to support the channel and the work I do, then pledging on Patreon is a great way to support. If you would like me to do more of these kind of videos, then liking, sharing and commenting on the video helps with the YouTube algorithm and therefore also the visibility of the video. And if you feel like I've earned your subscription, then thank you very much. Also, if you want more Factorio content, then I'm streaming live on Twitch Tuesday, Thursday and Sunday evenings at 8 p.m. Central European time. And this is over at Twitch TV slash Nilaus. Let's take a look at the advantages and disadvantages of using a main bus to structure your base. The biggest advantage is the self-balancing nature of the main bus based on supply and demand. Another advantage is how easy it is to visually identify bottlenecks of the base. Simply go through the lanes and see which ones are not full. It gives a clear indication of what to build next. Do you need more plates? Do you need more circuits? This is easy to spot on a main bus build. It is also simple to add and extract from the existing structure. If you want to add something, you simply add more resources to one end. If you want to extract something, you just add another branch at the end. Yet another advantage is how easy it is to scale. You can start with a single lane of copper and a single lane of iron and then scale up from there. That means it's going to be easy to scale up to the launch of the rockets, which is a very important part because you're not constraining yourself to a certain size, aside from, of course, the pre-allocated space you've assigned to the main bus. The main bus factory, when completed, also provides an excellent factory to build anything you need to build a much larger and much more spread out base with dedicated locations. The main boss also works really well for modded playthroughs. In a heavily modded playthrough with lots of new recipes, you may not always be aware of how things are used for later tech. And having a main boss and putting things back on the main boss means that they are readily available if a later recipe suddenly needs an earlier product. There are of course not only advantages, there are also disadvantages. And those are important to keep in mind when deciding how to build your base and working around the disadvantages. It is hard to scale beyond the pre-allocated space. For example, as you scale the base, you find out that you have allocated too little space for something such as red circuits. You always need more red circuits. But at that point, it can be difficult to scale it up because there is not enough room except at the end of the bus. Another disadvantage, which is a bit meta, but it's a bit boring because a lot of people built main bus bases and it is so prevalent that everyone, everyone knows what they look like. So it's a bit of a cookie cutter build. Another more technical disadvantage is the nature of the bus, that anything that comes earlier on the bus gets priority over what comes later on in the bus. That means that, for example, if your green circuit build consumes all of your copper, there will be not enough copper for the rest of the build. And then when you want to build some low density structures, you won't have any because everything has been consumed by greens. This is particularly a problem for certain parts of the base, especially when you unlock a new tech that has a high consumption, such as no red circuits being available after you branch into blue science, or no green circuits being available after you branch into blue circuits. When all is said and done, I highly recommend for any beginner, intermediate, or even experienced player to use this method as it gives a great structure to your base. This is particularly important if you have a tendency for your bases to turn out to a big spaghetti mess and want to some kind of method to get more structure. Even after 5,000 hours of Factorio, I still rely heavily on a main bus structure. It's just this good. And I've saved the most important advice for the very end to see who has been following it to the very end. Make sure that you have a sacred path between your main bus and your production units. I hope you have enjoyed this episode of my Factorio Masterclass. Thank you very much for watching and I hope to see you again in another episode. Until next time, take care and stay effective.